my point is um, that we had various benefits. A, we had a good hospital infrastructure to start with. B, we were relatively late uh, and could take some good learnings from the other countries. C, I believe social distancing is a good part of the German culture. Um, and uh, therefore, uh, we had much better prerequisites uh, to deal with this. Um, my criticism, uh, even though a lot has been done in the right way, my criticism is um, that we have focused too exclusively uh, on the coronavirus. Um, and we have basically ignored all the collateral damage um, that has been going on and continues to be going on. And that is in the healthcare sector with all um, uh, the cancer, the heart attack, the stroke uh, cases uh, still going on and not being treated the way they should be. Uh, but that is also obviously in, uh, in society. Um, you know, we're, we're seeing lost school years, uh, where we're seeing very many children uh, in precarious situation um, uh, that are suffering from what is going on uh, with us focusing on inclusive, exclusively on COVID. Stefan, thank you for fleshing out the point. I know in your own business, in the hospital's business, that you had to push out certain operations and surgeries and there were compensation payments made to those patients that had to forego the procedures. What happens here? Because the second wave looks like it's very much upon us and we've heard uh, all the various figures around hospital admissions at this point. Are we back to where we started around the first wave? Just to make it clear, I'm not making that point uh, for commercial interest. I'm doing that as a responsible citizen uh, who is watching out for the long-term good of our society. Um, the German government has been good enough to uh, make available a compensation package um, that makes us halfway whole uh, for the fixed cost charge that is ongoing. Um, but um, yes, the fixed cost charge is hurting us given that we were basically prohibited from treating elective surgery patients. There, from the trough, uh, in March, April, uh, we are seeing a steady, gradual uh, recovery. We're still in Germany um, below last year's levels. But I would expect, I would hope that we can close that gap uh, in the fourth quarter and uh, early next year at the latest. Um, how are other regions looking like, for example, the United States, a big market for you, which are also, um, of course, very much hit by the corona crisis? Uh, let me start first with Spain and our hospital operations there, where we were particularly hard hit in the uh, metropolitan areas of Barcelona and Madrid with COVID patients. And there we actually had uh, our hands full. Uh, on the other hand, outside these large metro metropolis, um, uh, COVID was uh, only a small phenomenon. Um, in the US, uh, we are in dialysis service business. As you know, dialysis service is dealing, uh, dealing with a chronic disease, and therefore there is nothing elective about this. You don't get your dialysis treatment. Um, you die within a few days. And therefore, there the demand for our services has gone on unabated. In, uh, as far as our uh, generic drug business is concerned, on the one hand, we've seen short-term sparks uh, of extra demand for COVID-related drugs and devices. On the other hand, net-net, we are suffering um, from a lack of elective surgeries. Perhaps you could also give us some sort of like trading update because you have clearly uh, skipped your uh, guidance or lowered your guidance, I should say, at the end of uh, July. But how is the third quarter going so far? We had an original guidance from February for the, for the full year, which explicitly uh, excluded any COVID-related effects, because at that time in particular, uh, COVID was a very, very uncertain phenomenon. Uh, and we have now adjusted our guidance on the occasion of Q2 results to fully include what we do expect uh, COVID effects to be. And yes, uh, there is a mild net negative to that. We have lowered our earnings growth guidance by four or five percentage points. Uh, but all in all, uh, we would still expect to be at around last year's level as far as net income is concerned. 
Stefan, it's Karen again, if I can probe a little bit deeper about this second wave that we're witnessing. Uh, clearly, the UK conversations have been quite instrumental. We're, we're talking about whether another national lockdown would be required at some point, that the local restrictions are not working. We've got more curfews that are coming to the mix. What do you think is going to be required? Do you think local restrictions are going to cut it through this next wave? Or do you think, unfortunately, we are going to have to go back into national lockdowns? Uh, the key underlying assumption for the guidance that I was just referring to is that there will continue to be local and maybe even regional outbreaks, but that a national shutdown um, in any of the major markets that we're active in uh, can be avoided. Uh, and as far as I can see, um, that is a very realistic assumption, continues to be one, and it is at least, uh, that's my observation, uh, the very aim of any politician uh, that I am talking to. Uh, very specifically, uh, as far as Germany is concerned, uh, yes, we're seeing these regional outbreaks, um, but I do believe that there are quite a few lessons learned uh, from the first uh, lockdown that we had in the March-April timeframe, um, and that therefore uh, the responsible politicians do know um, that we can make acute capacities available uh, on very short notice.